Welcome back, everybody. We are very excited to see you join us again. Uh, we have five very Velocity from New Zealand present first, then we'll have basis from India, followed by Mamo Muni from Africa, uh, followed by Lucy from Singapore, and she included again back from Africa. Right, our uh, esteemed judges today are three people who have been very actively engaged in the investment ecosystem, uh, including uh, looking at investing in women uh, VCs, uh, starting off with Anandya Chandra, who's the founder and CEO of Women Prosperity Lab in Singapore. Uh, she has been uh, driving startup ecosystem accelerators uh, and investing in women tech uh, for technologies befitting women and girls at scale across South Asia and Southeast Asia. Her career spans enabling technology and innovation across public and private sectors. Then we have Dr. Eva Law. She is the chairman for the Family Offices Association of Asia, as well as for the Women in Leadership Association, among many other things. Uh, she's a seasoned professional in asset management, private equity, wealth management, having diversified knowledge and experience in running multi lines of businesses. She specializes in serving ultra affluent and entrepreneurs with a proven record in creating new businesses and generating profits. And lastly, but not the least is Mo Harvey, who's the head of financial services and FinTech APAC for Enterprise Island. Mo is a, um, is one of, uh, sorry, Enterprise Island is Europe's most active seed investor, according to Pitchbook mm -hmm. in 2020. Based in Hong Kong, Mo is responsible for helping and starting um, to scale fintech companies in Asia Pacific, working with entrepreneurs to identify and harness opportunities in the financial services industry. So enough from me, uh, we will soon start the clock. I will be ending my screen share and I'll be handing this over to Carmen to kick us off from New Zealand. I request the other speakers to mute their mic uh, while you're not speaking. Thank you. Carmen, could you screen your, uh, share your screen again, please? Sure. I'm going to be in my event. Um, can you see that? Uh, we can, can see, see you. Can yes, see you can. Have... Yeah. Each startup okay. will, will present for about five minutes, followed by feedback from okay. the jury for three minutes. So, Carmen? Go Over to you. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you. So I started Velocity to democratize the home lending and mortgage valuation process to enable everybody to get a home mortgage and get into their first home. Um, if you think about it, every single bank in the world has to validate the value of a property before they can lend money on it. And Velocity helps them do this better and faster through a digital cloud-based platform that solves in the two problems around increased processes that lenders have to go through. Um, obviously, they do a credit check, but they also have to do a valuation check on every single property. Um, and as customers, though, we want this to be easy and fast. And so we solve these frictions by digitally connecting valuers to a panel and helping the bank streamline and transform the mortgage valuation process. We connect all the valuers digitally in the entire ecosystem, and then we automate that process of random allocation to valuers and capturing the data that the valuers provide back for the bank so that they can actually validate the value of a property, benchmark and do quality control, and really lend on the value of the property as opposed to the person necessarily. And particularly for the unbanked in the ASEAN region, this is a game changer because it enables the bank to say yes. So we launched in New Zealand just over six years ago, and we digitally connect 90% of the market of lenders use Velocity every single day. We connect all the valuers and brokers in the New Zealand market, as well as um, lending platforms such as listings portals to enable the streamlined processing of valuation ordering and a more seamless and fast mortgage valuation process. It enables the lender to do a better job managing and digital workflow so that they can actually track where valuations are. They can actually share information such as secure documents securely with valuers as opposed to emailing it out. And the random allocation to valuers means that it, there's strong quality control and the opportunity for collusion or fraud is removed. And so we digitize all of their policy and then seamlessly capture that data back. 
It's very, very easy to adopt Velocity so we can integrate with existing band infrastructure. We can actually leverage it as an API. It can be web services. And so it's entirely flexible and modular. And um, there's an entire suite of valuation products. So not only do we send valuations to valuers, but we also allow automated valuation models where we use the data. So it brings uh, together property intelligence, valuation ordering, and um, enables the bank to do deep insights, delivering significant value to lenders and to banks. And what we've done is actually transformed as a case study, the India market, where today it was a very manual process that lenders are having to choose the valuer, give them documentation, it's all manual, and we've completely digitized that process. We recognize in many of the emerging markets, valuers don't have access to tools and technology. And there's also not very good data to be able to benchmark and really validate the value of a property. And so created Velocity Connect, which is an app that allows the valuer to get the geo coordinates of the address, to capture all the information at the property when they're there, geo tagging the address and taking photos that are time stamped, to capture attribute data around the property, to sign that it's true and correct, and securely share that back with the bank. So suddenly the bank has access to accurate data and they can do benchmarking and quality control and it's a faster process. And when COVID hit, we created this as a remote valuation inspection tool so that the valuer could send it to a home occupier and the property occupier could download the app, take the photos and send it back to the valuer. So the valuer didn't have to go to the property it was still geotagged, so they knew the address was right. The photos were timestamped. They signed it was true and correct. And we brought business continuity through the Australian and New Zealand region under COVID. All this data capture that comes back through our platform enables lenders to create a rich property data hub of where we provide rich analytics so that they can actually really rely on the value of the property. And so particularly for the unbanked that don't have a credit score, they can say yes to the mortgage and they can track the performance of that portfolio and that portfolio risk. Mm -hmm. Enable them to say yes when, when they, the lender needs it most and particularly enabling um, the unbanked to get a mortgage. So we're pretty excited with where we're going on our journey. We've been successful in emerging markets such as India, uh, where it's certainly been challenging creating data and creating new digital connectivity in a very, very vast um, and very big country. And in New Zealand and Australia, in a more mature market, where very much the ability and the opportunity to deliver more robust decision making means better financial decisioning for all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pamela. And that was well within time, so I didn't have to buzz you. Uh, let's start with, uh, uh, you know, feedback from Mo. Uh, yeah, hi, Carmen. I absolutely love the concept of it. Uh, the pivot into making this an app um, that's verifiable and putting the onus then on the homeowners is uh, fantastic. Having family and property in the UK and Ireland, I totally understand that that pain point that it's caused for everyone. So that pivot for COVID um, is super impressive. Uh, two, two things for me, realistically. Um, uh, New Zealand market, you said you've got 90% penetration of the market lenders already using, uh, and then obviously Australia as well. What's your What's been your penetration in Australia? What's the traction like for you there? And how come you ended up in India as the next logical step from Australia and New Zealand? And more importantly, where next? Yeah, that's a really good question. So Australia has certainly been tougher. Um, our competitor is the incumbent who doesn't have a cloud-based platform and is not as customizable or... Um, yeah. um, so they're very well established. They've been a monopoly in the market for a very long time and banks move quite slowly, but we are alive with digital innovators like ING, um, with Latrobe, and um, we've created new products in that market as well, such as a new desk valuation. Um, we came Um, meant that they actually reached out to us and actually some of the global banks that were in India reached out and said they want to remove the opportunity of collusion of the lender or the valuer choosing each other. And so by putting a platform in the middle, 
then you actually make it random allocation and it removes that and also creates tremendous efficiency for a barrel manual process. Uh, and so as one of the fastest growing economies in the world, we ended up in India, um, as opposed to um, the usual journey that um, And how big is the team in India? Sorry? How big is the team in India? Um, the team in India is only around 14, but all of the technology is built in New Zealand. So um, we have a team of about 100 in total, uh, and we very much, we have a global team that supports our global markets. Um, and we'd like to very much expand into the ASEAN region, particularly where we see the opportunity to support the unbanked and bring digital quality control and data capture and also connectivity. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a totally transferable model. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Ananya, any questions, any thoughts? Yeah, um, thank you so much, Carmen. Uh, I'm glad you came to India. Kudos to you and power to you for operating in a quite a difficult market. Um, fascinating that the government and you know the big banks approached you. I think I definitely see the demand and the requirement in India, um, given the incidence of fraud. Um, you know, you talk about collusion and, you know, and it's actually the uh, the ones who need that mortgage the most that kind of get squeezed in the middle. Um, for me, I see kind of, you know, is there an opportunity to build something similar? Because I know you've designed this for immovable property, but something similar for movable property, because, you know, women typically, um, particularly in a lot of uh, these regions, uh, would, you know, perhaps not have their name on property de deeds, but perhaps can get you know, their collateral may be, um, you know, their jewelry or some some other movable property. So I'm wondering if this sort of velocity system can actually work for those kind of property property uh, things as well. Yes, um, that's a really um, and it definitely. So anything where you're wanting to connect um, to an external party and and share information securely and have it validated and come back, but also have a um, random relationships. Um, so again, you could have um, appraisers of jewelry or appraisers of anything that are on a panel that you know somebody relies on, and um, they're approved and um, they're uploading a photograph. It sends it securely. It gets valued yeah. and comes back. So already in India, um, we're doing um, in infrastructure and equipment, farm equipment and commercial property, which is not what we actually set out to do on day one, um, but actually the banks really like that, the residential and, and using it across the division. So very much, and that's a really great user case. That's interesting. Yeah. Thanks a lot, uh, Carmen. And uh, Dr. Law was having some issues with audio, so we will get her to touch base with you later. Right. So... Thanks once again, and I will now invite uh, Deepika, who spoke earlier in our first panel, to present about basis. Deepika? Hey, everyone. Just give me one second. Yes, please. Get yeah. My, oh. yeah, I'll just get my screen shared on. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, happy to talk to you all about uh, BASIS. So what is BASIS? BASIS is the financial destination for Indian women. Uh, we are a community and content-driven financial services platform currently available both on the App Store and in the Play Store, uh, specific to India for now. In terms of what we wanted to create, uh, we wanted to create a fintech destination for women anchored in education and communities where we're turning latent users who have been previously left out of India's uh, formal financial system into active and informed uh, consumers. If I were to spell this market out, the FinServe market for India, urban women in India by 2025 is going to be uh, the size of about $40 billion, which is huge in terms of uh, the access that you have those to, to those investment opportunities. Besides that, uh, there are several pain points which we all are fairly aware of. There is a lack of knowledge which often leads to inaction you cannot relate to existing fintech platforms because they lack the empathy to uh, talk to you money is complex and the default is that hey this is really overwhelming for me and there is a massive mistrust when it comes to existing financial advice products the banks or or agents as you will 
If we were to talk about the current scenario in India, less than 24% of uh, investors in the stock markets, capital markets are women. Uh, most popular uh, personal finance platforms have less than 20% women, and only 12% women make their own stock market based decisions and if i were to just look at these first two numbers they're probably highly inflated because it is men uh, managing those uh, investment accounts in terms of our team where uh, two uh, two of us have founded bases or one with an expertise in uh, technology and product and my experience in wealth management we have a team from uh, leading uh, fintechs and leading startups in india and backed by some wonderful investors our users love us. This is literally our favorite size uh, a slide. We sit at an NPS of about 68, which we revisit uh, every month, if not more often than that. Or the basis experience is one built around community and education. Uh, so if you do get to our platform, we provide you actionable recommendations for urban women's money decisions. We have proprietary algorithms and their gender intelligent insights that have gone into making these, uh, uh, in, you know, making these products for our users. The user journey is learn, discuss, act on that uh, and execute on that investment. And of course, come back to track the course of your journey. Uh, we have created literacy via videos, uh, quizzes, flash-based learning modules, what we call boosters. And uh, assuming the fact that we are designing this for a busy woman who wants to address the knowledge gaps and often doesn't have as much time to do so, so give it to her in a fun and palatable manner. Prior to Basis, women did not have a space to talk or discuss money. Uh, digital communities that are moderate, moderated women-only groups uh, thrive, and we see that with Basis, where highly moderated. Uh, we have in-app virtual masterclasses with experts on various topics, ranging from negotiations to how do I deal with you know, my alimony in a divorce and things like that. We also have curated and personalized advice where it's not one to many. Uh, our users can also subscribe for a premium service where they get a one to one financial advisor, access to various tools, recommendations, and uh, specific communities that might bequeath their interest. So, basis first, uh, or our premium plan literally went live about five days ago. So, I'm very happy to sort of uh, share with uh, share this with the entire team, especially so in the last one year when it comes to the post-COVID era, we are seeing a uh, we're seeing tailwinds, which are of course very promising for a product and industry like ours. Financial wellness is increasingly at the top of people's minds. There's a massive show, uh, shift in focus on money matters. 67% uh, of Indians are saving more as a result of the spending cuts, etc. And uh, when it comes to just talking about women itself, the default investments have been fixed deposits in the bank, which aren't doing them good at all. And uh, that's a big area we are trying to address. In terms of our approach, we're going via the community and uh, corporate approach where we're partnering we're partnering with relevant communities and corporates across the country. And uh, we're now partnered with over 40 of them, and that's work worked really well for us. Uh, we have about 50,000 users on our app. And uh, yeah, looking, we have global ambitions. The global market, as we know, as per the Oliver My Wyman report, is about $700 billion for women. We have global ambitions. And yes, when, once we power through India, looking forward to enter the other markets. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks so much, Deepika. I'll bring in Ananya first. Probably, I hope you have used this app. Uh, if not, I hope you soon do. But let's get to uh, absolutely. Yeah. No, um, I always, I'm, I always say that one, you know, Basis is one of the best financial wellness platforms out there, and I'm so happy that it's uh, from India. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, Deepika, thank you so much. Um, you know, great to get, you know, get a a deep understanding about what it is that you're seeking to build. Of course, I heard, um, you know, you talked during your panel session about how important community and education is uh, to your mission as a founder. I think when it comes to community, like we're seeing this with Wall Street Pets and Robin Hood, and it's interesting because those platforms are actually like mostly male led. Um, and I want to, I want to know what does, what are the conversations that are happening on 
a female financial wellness platform like this is and what's working and more importantly what needs to be improved when it comes to improving your cases community uh sure, sure. yeah i think yeah. Amanya, as you mentioned a lot of these conversations happen on other platforms in fact as an experiment we had opened out our community very early on to men as yeah. well and uh, much as expected there was absolute silence from the women because mm -hmm. they were not comfortable asking questions and, and all the uh, usual stuff, which also happens in our homes. But uh, yeah, within the app itself, the questions or the conversations range from, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm, I was an air hostess. I've just gotten back to back to formal workforce. I'm working with like a startup now and never invested before. I'm 24 years old. My parents only believe in, you know, the conventional investment instruments. How do I talk to them about it? starting there and ranging to somebody who's like say 42 you know i'm in the med middle of a separation how do i arrive at how much am i going to need for my retirement and for my children's education how much of that should be an ask from my soon-to-be ex-husband or or also good scenarios right hey i got my bonus and i've never done anything useful with it i've always spent it what do i do now and of course we know that insurance is a highly underserved market especially when yeah. it comes to women or uh, of the entire market i think only three percent are are women and we get a ton of questions related to not just life insurance but of course we have so many uh, women related issues which are unaddressed which pro and this community provides a safe safe space to talk about those and talk about money matters related to those whether it's reproductive uh, issues and what they cost etc so we've seen all of that in terms of what can be improved uh, definitely uh, reducing the number of what we have within our communities also circles if you might mm -hmm. have seen the app reducing the number of uh, circles and just making them much more affinity based uh, conversations got it thank you um yeah no that's that's really insightful and uh, the second question that i had was regard to you know the all important question sorry which is around monetization right mm -hmm. and I took your point completely in your, from your previous talk that, you know, ultimately, the more you spend on educating your customers, they're going to stay with you and you're going to increase your customer lifetime value, you know, all valid points. Um, in terms of building out, you know, I mean, I, I see that you've launched your premium uh, plan now. Congratulations. How are you thinking about building your uh, monetization as you go forward? No, no, no. Great question, Ananya. I think we didn't have the time to cover that, so I didn't in the uh, in those five minutes. But yeah, in yeah. terms of monetization, a part of it, of, of course, is going to be the subscription plan. But yeah. the larger part of it is going to be financial yeah, services, okay. which, like I said earlier, using our gender intelligent insights, proprietary algos, whether it's insurance products, and once we get into lending, credit cards, etc., uh, curating products for women. And uh, of course, then, then financial services becomes a, a, a big like revenue add-on to our plan. So yes, financial services are going to be the larger part of our uh, revenue. Okay. 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 Over time, but I'll bring in uh, Dr. Eva here if she can. Uh, if she has any questions for basis, Dr. Long. Uh, Okay, we're gonna be having some connection issues. Oh. I would have loved for more to ask a question for Deepika, but we are really over time, so yeah. I will connect you both uh, offline. Yes. So sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Yeah. Just keeping in mind for the jury and the uh, uh, upcoming startups, try to keep the questions and the answers to slightly under a minute, so we can uh, have more discussion. Right. Thank you. Um, next up, we will have. Uh, NK Makocha from uh, Mama Boni, which is based in Nigeria. NK, would you like to please share your screen? Okay, doing that now. Great. We can see your screen yeah. now. You're a go. Okay. Okay. Good day, everyone. My name is Inke Mokocha, and I'm the founder of Mama Money. Yeah. Do you know that in some communities in Nigeria, 
women actually use their daughters as collateral to assess funding for business. Um, and this is very, very, very heartbreaking. So, and this is the challenge of um, over 60% of Nigerian women that are living in poverty. So women like my mother, I started Mama Money due to my personal experience as a young girl with a widowed mother who had no skill or finance to start a business. So going to school feeding was a very big challenge for us. So I thought to create a platform where low income female entrepreneurs in Nigeria can assess funding for business. So our solution is a web platform, www.mamamoney.org, where individuals and organizations lend or donate to low-income female entrepreneurs to start or grow their small businesses. So this is how it works. Um, we train our women. We look for these women in different rural and urban slum communities. We train them on financial literacy skills and we get individuals to donate or lend online. These um, loans that have been donated and the grants that have been given to us are given to uh, uh, female entrepreneurs. So our business model, we when we lend to our women, we, 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 we charge them 15% on their loans. So 5% actually goes to lenders that give us these funds, and Mama Money takes 10%. Also, for donated funds, we get to keep 10% of all grants going to the women because we had to pivot. When coronavirus hit um, the world, we noticed that most of these low-income female entrepreneurs, most of them, after the lockdown, they couldn't really start their businesses because they've all lost their business fund. So we had to quickly pivot to giving micro-grants to low-income female entrepreneurs. And to make us sustainable, we charge 10% on... Funds that are donated for the micro grants. Advantage, what sets us apart is the financial literacy training that we give to our women. So women, we don't lend to women that we have not trained. So we are teaching these women how to keep their books. We innovated a toolkit that helps them track their sales, their expense, and um, their savings. Also, for women who do not have any skills, so we call them the no-skill women. We empower them with vocational skills training. And we also give low interest rates to prevent these women from being exploited by loan sharks. So our impact is there. So 99% of our loans have been paid back. We have over 83 lenders and partners on our platform. We funded 1,120 women uh, uh, on our platform. Then we've empowered onboarded 7,050 women from different communities in Nigeria. And most of our women that we've trained, 7,050 women, have recorded 20 to 30% increase in household income. So, so to reach our women, we do uh, monthly trainings in different communities. We reach out to them in local markets. We go into their communities that's what sets us apart because we don't wait for the women to come to us we go to where these women are and to get our lenders and donors we get them through social media uh, posts referrals and testimonials from lenders and donors so the mama money team is um, a group of women that are passionate about empowering other women so women who think it is highly unjust for a woman not to assess funding because of her economic status. So, thank you. Perfect. Five minutes. Thank you so much, Nkem. Um, Dr. Eva, can you hear us? Uh, would you have any questions for Nkem? Uh, 
unfortunately we're struggling with dr eva's technology here i want uh, i will wait for her to come back on more do you have any questions for mama moni um yeah sure so, so the nigerian market is is a super interesting one and we're looking at sort of an assessment of markets for for p2p companies in particular anything to do with sort of microfinance it's 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 a no brainer in terms of market um there's already a number of players active um over there is there anybody targeting the the female market number one that could be considered a competitor to you uh, and my second question is in terms of acquisition of users um and customers going to market and going to the might appreciate that this is a grassroots process um but is there a way where you can uh, be a bit more impactful in terms of one to many uh, in onboarding um and where, where do you think you're going to go with that okay so currently we are working on an online onboarding platform that will make we actually did um like different interviews going to the churches the mosques and we asked these women the platforms that they want to um it would be easy for them to assess us and they and they told us so with the feedback we got for them we are working on on the platform and to be long you know i i'm actually seeing uh, an opportunity for you to um you know kind of build out the value proposition for these entrepreneurs maybe you know give them access to a debit card or a credit card um you know and as you know to help them as they build out their businesses to get even better financial services and access to credit scores etc yes so currently we we work in a partnership with a financial institution in nigeria so for all our women they actually get to open bank accounts and the way we've programmed it um when they access loans um they pay back with their bank account so it's helping them build credit history so that if so our cap is 100000 and their business grows they need to go to 150000 so we can recommend them to other financial institutions that are reaching out to us to introduce our women to them so that's how we built yeah. it fantastic thank you Perfect. Thanks again, uh, Nkem and Ananya and Mo for the questions. We will now move on to Lucy. So Debbie, I'll hand the stage over to you. Thank you. Let me just share my screen. Yes, please. Please let me know when you see it. Just loading, and you're you're good to. Right. Okay. Um this is just got it has a video on here so please just shout if you can't hear the video but it did work when we were testing this. So uh hi everybody. Um so I'm Debbie Watkins, the CEO and co-founder from Lucy. I go, love goes. 
I go where love goes. I go where love goes. Yeah. So um, Lucy Bat is a neo bank for women entrepreneurs. Um, entrepreneurs generate higher revenues, create more jobs, and use their profits more wisely. Helping women entrepreneurs to succeed has a greater impact all round. Women entrepreneurs have consistently less access to business building financial services than their male counterparts everywhere around the world at all socioeconomic levels. Empowering and enabling women, therefore, to start and grow their own businesses makes sense for everyone. It just isn't happening enough. And so that is what we, at Lucy, decided to do. Lucy is a financial services platform designed from the ground up to provide entrepreneurial women everywhere with the tools they need to take control of their financial future, to realize their potential, to grow and thrive. From supporting foreign domestic workers to save to start their first business back home. To helping homepreneurs get started after a career break. Small and micro business owners to effectively run and grow their businesses. And enabling successful women to in turn invest in other women. Entrepreneurship is stressful, scary, and lonely. Success depends on many different factors, and most entrepreneurs don't have convenient and affordable access to everything they need to grow and thrive. So we decided to fix that with an integrated suite of holistic services that are delivered seamlessly through our app, affordable, accessible, and relevant. We've started in Singapore and we'll be tailoring products as well as languages to each market that we move into to ensure that we solve the unique issues that each segment has. One size fits all is really one size fits none. And so we're making it personal and making it feel personal as well. Our technology platform has been built from the ground up to enable us to work with different partners in different countries so that we can effectively provide up close and personal services that benefit both the banks that we work with. And the women we serve. Thank you. Great. All of you have been wonderful with keeping to the time with your presentations. Um, more, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. Hi, hi Debbie. Um, Singapore is a super interesting market at the moment uh, with um, the announcements of the, the new virtual bank licenses um, and also an interesting place to start um, a, 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 a fintech startup, particularly at the moment. Um, so, so just two questions in terms of, you know, have you approached any, any of those successful applicants um, with the new virtual bank licenses in Singapore in terms of, you know, an interplay and potential partnership there and whether there was any appetite for that? Or are you doing anything with SG Innovate to help them work on their female founders funding as well? Um, actually, yes, yes and no. Um, we don't need a banking license to work in Singapore. We're actually using an e-money license, which is the same as Revolut and TransferWise are using for their um, mobile wallets with attached cards. Um, and so that's enabling to do, us to do pretty much everything we want to do except lending right now. Uh, we are talking um, already to a number of um, capital providers, both banks and private debt funds, um, as far as access to capital for lending to uh, the home-based entrepreneurs, but that will be a little bit further down the line. Um, but no, we're, we're going to be launching based upon uh, an e-money license. Got it. But, you know, a partnership or an alignment or some, some in some way, shape or form with those banks that are essentially starting from scratch here with like a grab and a sink towel. Yeah, an awesome opportunity. Yeah, could could be. And as I say, we're we're kind of very open. Our, our model is all about collaboration and partnership. So, um, and and you know what I'm seeing from the the places that I've worked in the past, and and I've lived in quite a number of developing countries as well, is that, um, you know, a lot of a lot of the banks aren't really interested in this market. 
um, they they just kind of see female micro entrepreneurs as just being something they don't want to get their hands dirty with, but they would absolutely love the consolidated loan book. Of course. Yeah. Debbie, I'll just go ahead. Hi there. Um, Hi. Our second chat this week. So you already know how enthusiastic I am about what you're building. Um, I think a quick question at my end is, how are you thinking about go to, going to market and acquiring customers at a relatively low burn? Yes. Well, I mean, Sing Singapore is kind of, we, we chose Singapore as the pilot country for a number of reasons, one of which is that it's kind of very enabling environment. Um, we are what we're doing is a combination of things, one of which is uh, digital advertising um, focused particularly on LinkedIn and Facebook because you're able to get very, very niche and targeted in who sees the messages. Um, but I've also been working closely with NGOs, for example, that support foreign domestic workers. They're very positive about what we're doing because, of course, they recognize the problem and they see that nobody else is doing anything to solve the problem. Um, and then I've got connections with a whole bunch of like business women network groups, um, expat wise Facebook groups, uh, kind of everything. So we're, we're really coming at it from, from multiple different directions. Um, and as I say, the value proposition to all the different segments is really very clear to them because say nobody's actually doing anything about this right now at all. Sorry, I was on mute. The term of 2020 coming into 2021. Uh, thank you so much, Debbie. Uh, we'll be having some difficulties with Dr. Law's uh, connection. So unfortunately, she's not been able to join us. Uh, over to Ifoma for uh, showcasing She Cluded. Uh, this will be our last uh, demo pitch, as you'd call it. Uh, appreciate everybody's patience with a few minutes that we have overrun. But I think we'll catch up very soon. So. Ifoma, over to you. Would you like to share your screen? Yes. Any difficulties, Ifoma? Sure. If you're not able to share, yeah. We can't see your screen shared though. I'm having difficulty sharing my screen. You have no a copy worries. of my presentation. Yes, we will do that. Please give us a few seconds. We'll do that. Right. Um, just let us know when we need to change the slide, and we'll do that for you. Please go ahead okay. and start. Hello everyone, my name is Ifoma Udo and um, I was the CEO of a tech funding company for four years and while I was there, one of my goal was to make an investment in a female company. 
But guess what? I didn't see any women coming. So I sat down in different panels and I didn't see women. My first thought was that, you know, the men were more intelligent. But after listening to different pitch, I got the message. Many women were not coming forward, was not coming forward to get money. And if they did not get money, they were all going to remain small. So that made me think in words and start a company called Shecluded. So Shecluded started out as a fintech credit company for women focused on middle, um, providing women capital and knowledge to actually grow. And after we've done this for a couple of months, we have now built the first digital female bank for Nigeria. Next slide, please. So what are the problems that we've identified? Existing financial institutions do not cater for the average women. The loan algorithm excludes sectors that women dominate. Um, more female-centric approach to savings and investments based on gender lens needs to be employed and lack of knowledge and actions of financial services are the problem they face. How do we intend to solve it? The next slide. We intend to provide a digital bank where women can get access to credit when they want, credit for personal development, where they can save depending on what they want and how they want with their friends, just the way they want. We want a network, a community of women where we can leverage the power that women have in working together. And we typically want a wealth advisor to be able to talk to women based on what we've been able to learn from our pilots. Next slide. Our progress so far. So since we started in 2019, we have a community of 15,000 members. We've done 2,000 plus loans. We've done consultations from business to wealth on 1,100. And we've been also able to provide financial education on social media, on different women network. Basically, our approach to market is target women communities and just be there. Next slide. Our traction so far. So this is what our revenue traction is so far. This year, we've grown in team. We've grown in partnership with bigger financial institutions. And these are our projections. Next slide. When people say, is there a women, is there a market for women? Is this a big enough market to pay attention? The stats are there from McKinsey 2020 report to show, and we're just targeting that if we can calculate to get just 2% of the market, it's a sizable market for us. Next slide. So this is what the landscape in terms of banking and microfinance look like, basically. In terms of gender and building something that is very gender focused to capture women, we are seated very nicely in terms of how our products are easy to assess and in terms of our tailoring to women. Next slide. So what are we doing differently? Our loans are targeted at business and personal development. We want women, that's what our brand is known for. You have to be doing a business or you have to invest in personal development. Our policy and our philosophy is loans should translate to good debt. We've also put things like health insurance and pension. We've partnered with the biggest pension companies, the biggest um, health insurance companies to be able to access loans and um, health insurance for women to drive more inclusion. We have advisory based on the fact that we focus on women. We have data on different, um, on different sectors that women operate in. So if you go to banking data today, because most women in Nigeria are doing trade, they're classified as retail, but based on where we sit, we see difference between retail clothing, retail food. So we've been able to break down into demographics that women play in. Then education and community. We have a network of different women and we are very big on pairing women with women doing the same thing that they do. Next slide. Our product leverage, again, is we are doing algorithms that basically puts and enable more women to come in. So most of our algorithms, even though they don't have collateral, things like their social capital, things like you know, what they have, you know, their plans and stuff. Assets financing, we launched a motherhood financing and was the first in Nigeria to be able to provide women with loans to buy breast pump. Um, rocking bed, things that are valuable and can help the productivity for women. Personal development and business capital skill. Next slide. 
We are also launching a product. Our app is also going to put have our, our savings products, um, our pensions and group savings. Next slide. Education is a very, very key part to what we do. So we are very, very big on education and we want to be able to put all our educational content in our app on one side. Next slide. So this is our business model. We make money on our credits. We make money on our advisory. Our web advisory, we charge per month for to be able to assess it. And our savings, as it starts growing, we are... Um, we, are, we also make money from savings. Next slide. So this is what our team looks like currently, and it's always changing. So there's me, there's, um, we have an advisor that has been the head of women banking for Access Bank, and is currently at uh, World, is currently at IFC, and that's an investor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ifoma. Anania, any questions? Thank you so much, uh, Ifeoma. Um, you know, I'm just uh, curious. So, when you say you have a digital, so you have a digital banking license in Nigeria, or are you white labeling um, uh, products from banks and insurance companies? So, for insurance, we're working in partnership with insurance company. For right. bank, we have we are we have a lending license, and we're working on an uh, MFB license. And okay. MLB, different, different MLBs have met us to partner with them, but we want to get our own MLB device. Got it, got it. And I'm just wondering, do you are you planning on introducing, um, you know, um, debit and credit cards, or is that already part of the uh, service offering? We haven't thought that. We haven't thought about debit and credit card. Okay. So where is your major revenue source today? Is it on the fee side? Yes, it's on the loans and the wealth. Those are the two that have started. We just started um, savings this month because we just got the license to be able to do that. Okay, thank you. More, any questions? Uh, Ananya took um, all my questions on, on the revenue and where it's attributed to. Um, you're certainly achieving the hockey stick at the moment. So going from, what was it, 20 to 50 to 209, uh, year three trajectory, that's fantastic. The team, um, at the moment, I think you said there's 13 on the team. How is that structured and where does it need to be in order to uh, really deliver on that sort of projections and going into 2022? So our projections for 2020 lies in the fact that, I mean, we've made, from last month, we've made a major bet in tech, which is, you know, the savings, the, um, I think that's where our major bet is. Then we've also been able to start deep relationship with deep financial institutions in terms of funding our loan book so that it's not, it doesn't come from us because typically we, at the end, initially when we started like last year and stuff, we funded from our balance sheet and we had to have queue, people waiting on the queue and stuff. So we were changing our strategy for how we actually fund. And have you got a, are you seeking investment at the moment then to, to help build that out again? Hello? Yeah, I said again more. Uh, sorry, are, you, are you seeking, that? you said IFC is an investor, are you going to be seeking more investment to help build, build out and, and, and get that MSV license as well? Sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, I don't know if it's my microphone or not. Like, I'll take it offline. I'll, I've loads of questions for you. Love to stay chatting. I think the question was with regards to IFC, and you said IFC is one of the investors. Uh, no, I mean, the lady that sits on our board, she currently works on a gender specific role on IFC. So we are getting insights from her on basically how to actually scale and stuff because we want skill and we want skill fast. Great. Thank you so much again for that question, Mo, and uh, Ifuma for the presentation. That brings us to the end of the showcase. I would like to once again thank all the five presenting startups as well as our jury members for taking out time for this session. I hope you've learned something very interesting about five different products uh, who are enabling women and are uh, 
actually very exciting from just a pure fintech perspective on their own right so thank you all we'll be coming back to you uh, in a minute's time with the next session which will be talking about regulations and policies when it comes to enabling um uh fintech to cater to women right so give us 2 minutes we'll go backstage and come back thanks for your patience thanks everybody again thank you thank you